Good evening, everybody. I'll bring this regular meeting of council to order for April the 2nd, 2024. Resolved that the agenda for April 2nd, 2024, regular meeting of council now be adopted. Moved by Councillor Powell, uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? I'd like to have an addition to okay. the in camera uh, personnel. Personnel? Yeah. So we can add that to the in camera. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the March the 19th, 2024 regular council meeting and the March 26, 2024 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 4.1, result of the public hearing on bylaw number 8, or sorry, 11, 2023, for the establishment of an accommodation tax be opened. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobic. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I'll call the public hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing the public hearing is to allow any interested person to make representation. I ask that questions or register an objection re uh, regarding the proposed bylaw 11 2023, the accommodation tax bylaw. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and specific address. So we we'll, shall begin. Those on video, just raise your, your, uh, your virtual hand and then I will address you uh, when, when that time comes. So we'll start the public hearing. Uh, again, this is, um, I believe this is like uh, three or more than three or four uh, of, the, um, of the hearings. We've had hotel hearings, I think about four times. We've had uh, one with the uh, Airbnbs and now this public one. So. Anyway, we'll continue on with that. So if anyone wants to make representation, they do so now. Anybody? Oh, go, go, go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Juice. If you can just... Uh, if you can introduce yourself. Sure. Um, Michael Juice, uh, President CEO of the Manitoba Hotel Association. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. Okay, no, thank you, and uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, pleasure to be able to speak tonight on this topic. Um, as the name of our organization implies, we represent hotels all across the province. Um, since 1927, so we're close to 100 years old, we've been working to help support their common needs and interests. Uh, membership in our association is voluntary, and right now we have around 270 hotel members all across the province with several in Swan River. Over 80% of our members are locally owned. They're small family businesses, just like any other business in your community. They shop in your stores, they support your sports teams, and they contribute to various charities like many others. They also support many families through direct employment. These members have been through a lot over the past few years as we were just recovered from our darkest hour at the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic brought the travel and hospitality sector to their knees quite simply. For months on end, hotels operated at reduced capacity or shut their doors completely, leading to massive revenue losses and widespread layoffs. Despite limited zone revenues, bills such as property taxes and utilities still had to be paid. To just survive, many hotels had to take on more debt to get through the pandemic. That debt is now having to be renewed at higher interest rate levels. Hotels are also facing an uphill battle to recover. Many are still grappling with reduced demand, as higher inflation interest rates also hit our, our customers' pocketbooks. With less disposable income, many households are cutting back on travel. And cutting back on travel will have knock-on effects for other sectors and industries as well. As globally, only about 30% of tourist spending is on the actual accommodation itself. The other 70% goes to areas such as retail, restaurants, and transportation costs such as gas. When hotels struggle, those businesses do as well, leading to a negative knock-on domino effect. At just under 3% of GDP, tourism is a major driver of our shared economic prosperity. 
and most of the tourism in Manitoba is local as well. In Manitoba, about 85% of all tourism is people getting out and seeing their own province. The accommodation tax will hit local families doing staycations and local businesses as well. Whenever a business needs to bring in a worker or a contractor, they will have to pay the additional 5% tax for the accommodation. Also, in many communities, accommodation taxes can often suffer from a lack of transparency and they can often be moved to general revenue and just generally disappear. That lack of transparency can leave taxpayers feeling disillusioned on where their hard-earned dollars are going. Hotels are critically important though to our economy and our communities and they're still very much in the recovery phase, laser focused on rebuilding and regaining their footing. Now is not the right time for the accommodation tax. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing, more visitors staying in Swan River. When hotels do well, the community does well. Hotel property taxes are based on their ability to generate revenue. So more hotel revenue leads to more municipal revenue. That revenue supports the services we all rely on and enjoy. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. I do want to compliment the Mayor and Council for their ongoing open dialogue and engagement on this topic. Um, as questions of taxation are never easy, and speaking of taxation, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight due to the provincial budget. But I do look forward to carrying on the conversation and answering any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Does anybody, uh, any member of council, have any questions to Mr. Juice at all? Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Juice. Thank you for your presentation. Well, or, well, well, well worded. You have 270 members. Do you know how many hotels there are in Manitoba? I don't know that you should, by the way. Um, we're just over 300 total, so we're probably about 80% of all hotels uh, in the province would be members. Um, and it would stretch our largest would be, you know, my room count would be the Delta and downtown Winnipeg with close to 400, and then some of our rural ones would be around four rooms, um, and kind of everything in between. Okay, thank you. That's good news. Councilor Mollick. Yes, thank you for the letter of the speech. It was very good. In your travels with and speaking with all the hotels, and hotels which have mm -hmm. accommodation taxes in the cities and towns that they're in. Has there been any positive input to what has helped them in their businesses by having this tax, as in promoting for them and stuff? Have you ever mm -hmm. encountered any positives from it? Mm -hmm. um, I think when it comes to the implementation of the tax, um, for our sector, some of the key principles we look for is we like Obviously, you know, our sector is being taxed, so some kind of sector involvement or hotelier involvement on where the revenues flow to. Um, typically, where we see success, uh, again, um, you know, I can use Winnipeg as an example, where a portion of that revenue supports the operations of tourism Winnipeg. Another portion of that revenue uh, is used, for example, uh, to attract more events to the community. So the original intent of these taxes when they came in 15 years ago, it was largely a virtuous cycle was envisioned where your current guests would help support a future one with all the revenues raised being go back going back to those tourism and promotion activities. So if this tax goes forward, we're very, you know, we would support those efforts of it goes back directly to putting more heads in beds as we say and be laser focused on that as one of our fears and risks is that um, it goes into general revenue or some other area which is less of a less direct link to tourism. So that would be our you know, strong preference of it going completely towards those, we use the term heads and beds efforts, which can be a variety of things as tourism, promotion, marketing, uh, helping bid on events and attracting. Thank you. As examples. I appreciate your comments there. As I understand the tax, the potential tax is, is direct, directly going to recreation and active living. So that sort of supports it. Did I hear you say you would support it if it went to that direction? Um, I think recreation and active living, I think, you know, we, we support it really is, for example, if you're doing it on tourism marketing, promotion, uh, event attraction, for example, um, I think if you saw the recent, you know, Briar in Regina, there is Regina Hotel Association ads there. So in Regina, uh, they have a hotelier committee that looks at where the revenue raise goes to and they will bid on events like a Briar, things like that, which, you know, may not be a fit for all communities, but, um, when it starts going to things like infrastructure um, and pieces like that, that's when we do have, I'll say, challenges um, and several communities. Um, and again, where we have some challenges, I think, are where it's going to support an event center, I'll say, which in some areas can be a direct competitor to hotels, who a lot of hotels have event <laughs> space. And so we really do, um, when we see these taxes and see positive impacts, it's when it is very, very focused on 
uh, tourism promotion, tourism marketing, and then doing things like event attraction and hosting. Perfect, thank you. And I can't speak for council, but I sense council agrees with 100% of what you just said. That it will go to attracting provincial soccer, volleyball, hockey tournaments, the round up, the road, the number. That's what I feel it should go to. A question, I'm not sure you know the answer. What percentage of guests at hotels generally are there for recreation? And how would you know, because I assume guests don't sign up, say, I'm here for the hockey tournament, I'm here for the soccer tournament. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's a good question. I'm sorry, I don't have a, a great answer on that. I mean, it'll depend, you know, market by market and time of season and stuff like that. Um, you know, weekend, you'll typically see more of that leisure recreation traffic. And then during the week, you'll have a lot of that business traffic again, whether it's contractors or people there for work purposes. Um, so sorry, I don't have a great answer on that split, but um, just to speak further on that event attraction side in some communities, um, you know, Brandon's another example, Winnipeg being one um, to, you know, get an event like, you know, and be funded, I'll say, for something like a soccer tournament. The organizers have to put forward kind of a business case, and usually doesn't be super complex. A couple of pages of this is how many you know people we're looking to attract. This is how many out of province. This is how many hotel stays we're looking to generate. And again, it's all of that view of I'll say a self-sustaining loop of a guest staying for this event is going to help attract a guest for another event down the road. Okay, uh, I appreciate everything you said. So if I were to summarize, what I thought I heard is the Manitoba Hotel Association, if the money was targeted to recreation, promotion, things that would fill the hotels, which I'm 100% in favor of as a coach, then you, would, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't be against it. Um, I'll say yeah, typically if it's laser focused again with all the revenue going back to, you know, putting more heads and beds, our industry is a lot more comfortable with these approaches but where we really struggle is when it starts to go towards infrastructure where we've seen again in some communities it just go to general revenue i'll say which again you know does a clean and healthy community does benefit a hotel but it benefits all businesses where you know hotels are already contributing with their own property taxes and things like that so if it's i'll say laser focused on heads and beds we're much more comfortable with these types of taxes perfect thank you very much <laughs> okay anybody else <clears throat> All right, uh, any other presentation? I see that Mr. Manish is on there, so if you have any um, anything to uh, present. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just a question towards, uh, I guess, yourself and Council General, referring to the uh, previous speaker about promoting and putting heads in beds. What is the community of our small river? have in place for promotion of that kind of uh, program that he's talking about? Well, right now we're in that process, uh, in that consultation process to, uh, you know, if, if it goes ahead, but um, to take the information for from yourselves and others, as well as Mr. Juice or even from the public, to make some, uh, I guess, some uh, suggestions of what council can use for that, and I guess council will make that decision as far as uh, if it's a board or if it's a liaison group that will help to to finalize those items. That that will be up to the council. But right now, we're just formalizing some of those items on what to do if we uh, did want to implement the uh, the accommodation tax. I could be completely wrong. Council so, will make that decision when the time comes. <clears throat> So in following uh, what Mr. Ju said, that this could be a little bit premature on this tax until there is an organization of promotion for our community. It would be definitely something in the in the works, I would have to think, but council will make that decision in the end. Go ahead. Uh, to further what you were saying there, Your Worship, um, there is actually seed money sitting aside from the old recreation association when they rounded up their operations. Uh, there was there is money set aside uh, currently for events that uh, need some seed money to get any events going and then once they're round up and do their uh, accounting at the final end they repay uh, a portion or all of it back uh, based on the agreement that uh, was put forward at the beginning so that to attract these events to put, as Mr. Juice says heads in beds I guess um, and the thought process was to expand on that to not just 
a council, but some type of independent organization or group of individuals board that would um, be tasked with that and not just a council. But, uh, that was this, like, but there is that money that's sitting there. No one's utilized it at this point or came forward, uh, but it's there. And this is definitely uh, an opportunity where that fund can be expanded to increase that fund um, to bring bigger and more often events here for people. Good point. <clears throat> you want to make a Well, I'm commenting on that. In commenting on that, wouldn't it be uh, prudent to have the organization in place with probably a paid organizer or a paid individual looking after promotion of our community rather than collecting the tax dollars first and then looking, hoping that you're going to get put in the right place to promote the community? Would it not be a proper decision to forward with that first? I think that that is missing here. And you would likely get cooperation or more cooperation from the hoteliers locally and knowing that, that their money that is being collected is going towards promotion of the community by somebody who's spending uh, a career promoting our community. If, if this is what we receive out of this time, uh, at this time or, or through this process, then that, that's the recommendation. The council will make that decision. We're not making an implementation. like. As an example, it's not going to be passed tonight, and it's going to be implemented on, say, June the 1st. This is a process that we're going through that we'll have to make sure that we'll have everything kind of figured out as we move along through this. We've been working on this for several months now, so uh, it's definitely something that, again, you know, taking uh, the information from everybody, and, uh, and we'll put that stuff together once we uh, are finished with this uh, consultation and uh, put our things together and make the decision on how we want to proceed. If that's the case, what was just mentioned now, then that's what we'll do. But we're a little bit too, still in the process of this, uh, this, uh, of this idea, I guess. Councilor White. With, uh, Mr. Minish, would the, would the Chamber of Commerce or RISE fit your definition of an entity that could uh, be creative in promoting our community more? Actually, Mr. White, I don't know enough about their uh, what they're responsible for, and I believe Mr. Juice would have experience working with some of these other communities that could tell us what they have for organizations to promote communities and how they organ how are they organized and what is their mandate. And if he would weigh in, if he's still there, he can maybe tell us and enlighten, enlighten us because I can't tell you whether Rise would fit that program or the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce is, as you know, struggling at the moment in Swan River. So uh, to suggest that they would take on something like this would be uh, something they may be interested in or may not be interested. I cannot speak to that. Okay, thank you. You want to present now? Um, yes. Yeah. Come forward. Um, <clears throat> Ramona Doherty, Box 47 Cowan. Um, part of it was what Reed was just saying. It appeared like it sounds like you're collecting the money and then deciding down the road what we need to do with it, like that it's not really needed now. Um, Mr. White brought up about the tourism percent, and we went, I think it was the first or second meeting. Um, I mean, I went through our books. It's about 5% that we do um, at the Super 8. I don't know about the other ones for tourism. Um, like uh, Mr. Jacobson suggested, this this is the fifth time we've been together. We had four meetings um, between council and a special meeting. We had a roundtable meeting, which was the fifth. So, I mean, there's no point in us hashing. Out. I think you guys are well aware of where we stand on this. Um, there was also mention of every town having an accommodation tax. Why don't we? Well, I've now been um, talking with the president there. There's actually eight towns or cities in Manitoba that have the accommodation tax. So there is many that don't. All those towns and cities had it in prior to the, like it's, some of it's been since 2008. Um, all of them have been prior to COVID, prior to all this other stuff happening, which um, we're just in a different place right now, I think. Um, taxes, we've gone over that. Everybody knows how much taxes we're already um, paying, I just think, We've been taxed enough. Um, 
without putting in another one. That's all. Thank you. Okay. And, and yeah, like we are compiling this. We, we've taken your comments. Like you said, there's no problem with uh, with us visiting and, and having the round table and all those discussions. We have the, you know that information. The purpose tonight was more to like have the public as a large come out to yes, and speak. But obviously yeah. we didn't have that. But it's still it's fine to have uh, Mr. Juice or, or the rest of the hotels still being here to voice anything that maybe we have missed. And uh, I guess our public was the petitions we sent in. Yeah. Okay. That was our customer saying. Fair enough. Council uh, White. I think Mr. Minish had a question of uh, Mr. Juice that he hopefully will answer. What do other communities do about getting a person, an entity, promoting business? Um. I can kind of speak to that a little bit. Manitoba, again, we're maybe a little unique with just the different sizes of communities. So Winnipeg, again, a large portion of the revenue, you know, a good portion of tourism Winnipeg's funding comes from the accommodation tax, which again is something that I'd say, you know, as a sector, we're comfortable as, you know, tourism in Winnipeg's mandate is to put more heads in beds. Brandon, they also have a body called Discover Brandon, um, and tourism brand are much smaller, um, obviously within you know, a small community, but there is about one to two staff there. And again, that is uh, their mandate as well to uh, promote tourism to Brandon and to market the community. And they also, uh, that group there uh, hosts and handles the Brandon event attraction fund. So uh, Brandon's fund is a little unique where they sort of support legacy events through their accommodation tax. So things like uh, ag days that just happened um, sorry, the Royal Winter Fair, I mean, sorry, just happened, Ag Days, and there's a couple other events that are legacy events that get ongoing support from their accommodation tax to keep them in Brandon, and then they also do new event bids and grants and things like that. So, um, again, it varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but in Manitoba, we also do see some municipalities, if they have an economic development officer, um, it doesn't necessarily fund their activities, it maybe funds a you know, part-time uh, tourism person to help them out, but um, that is something we also see too, where there is an interplay with a local economic development office, and they um, again report again to the CAO typically, but they would have that interaction input with uh, a volunteer group of local hoteliers to offer input on where the revenue goes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anything further? Go ahead. Um. <coughs> couple questions here just to the general group and I, I just you had mentioned that there was eight communities in the province that don't have and like we're unique we have we're one that doesn't have it but we have communities surrounding us that do do you see um, any traffic that are coming to Swan River to use your facilities as compared to uh, because there is no tax here as compared to the other communities like Dauphin or the Paw or those our, or you don't have any data on that? No, and it's, um, so. speaking from our own hotel, that's back to um, the people that come here have to be here. They're mostly business or their construction or their, um, we just had a weekend though of hockey that apparently we tried to book at Dauphin to begin with. So they ended up in Swan River, so they don't pay, save 5% by going to Swan River. No, the, the reason I, I, that came to mind was that one of the arguments was that people will pass up our community and go to other areas that didn't have it because um, to save costs. But, so that was just a, a quick question. And my second question is to uh, Mr. Manish, um, looking through my notes from the last uh, meeting that we had with you. Um, you had mentioned that it would uh, potentially some of the funds could, where you had made the comment, you have to spend to make money and you had alluded to economic development. Um, but I just wanted to flesh that out a little bit more is that would you be more in favor or are you suggesting that maybe like the town, um, like I mean, we got rise but the town um, engage or have hire a specific economic development person that would be tasked to like seeking out events or helping to uh, put heads in beds or generate more revenue for having people come this way? I can't speak for the group, but I can tell you is that Swan River is um, lacking on promotion of itself. 
uh, if anybody sitting at that table doesn't acknowledge the swan river is different now than it was 20 years ago or 10 years ago then you missed something but our community is needing identification and we need somebody to go out and represent us and present ourselves to the world so that we're not left in a corner where nobody stops only for because they have to be here as was mentioned earlier and that's the wrong reason for tourism is you have to be in Swan River and Swan River has a lot to offer it's a it's a wonderful community but it's not being identified and my your your question to me whether I would promote that with the tax yes I would I would be it would be part of the of the an investment that would be good for our community but which comes first and the hiring of a person to do this or finding a person to do this has to be able to promote and know our community it's not just swan river it's the swan river valley and all of the outlying communities and the benefits to the hoteliers to the other businesses that are affected by by tourism would not be exponential but it would certainly be something that everybody could live with not to be tried too too political but that's the answer i can give you mr mario yeah, no, uh, that's exactly, uh, I think you and I are thinking along the same lines on that. So thank you very much. Councilor Medwood. <clears throat> I have a question. Um, in regards to the money going to RISE for economic development, RISE supports the entire valley. Would you, as hotel owners, want to see that money being specific money coming from accommodation tax being identified for a specific reason such as activities 100% geared towards heads and beds because there's a lot of things that define economic development that don't necessarily result in heads and beds so does there need to be a clarification if that money is being funneled to and or through rise that it is 100% geared toward any promotion that must result in heads and beds or can it be for any plan or idea under the rise umbrella that may or may not result in heads and beds who wants to answer that question actually i'll, I'll speak question. to that I, I can't i can't i can't speak for the group here but i can speak from a personal point of view that was in business for almost 50 years and, and the more activity you have in business in your community, the more people want to come to it. And if your main street has got a bunch of closed doors on it, it, it doesn't promote your community. And what we need to do is find, well, let's just look at the foundation of our community. We've got the Woodlands Division, we have Agricultural Division, we have tours and opportunities that we're probably not capitalizing on. And if those bring cars and vehicles to our community, beds and heads will be a result of that, but also will be economic development. So it isn't one thing in particular that is going to make our community successful. The problem that the hoteliers are having, they're struggling after COVID, and they need to get more people in our community, not just people that have to come to Swan River, but want to come to Swan River. And the trick is to find the right person with the right attitude that will promote our community, not just Swan River, but our community. And you will find probably you get full support on this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member. The second part to that question is, as Swan Valley Rise is funded by four municipalities, how will the accommodation businesses within Swan River feel about being the only accommodation businesses required to contribute funds to rise for economic development because the hotels and or airbnbs in swan valley west mountain minnetonas bozeman they will not be subject to an accommodation tax and therefore they won't be contributing on the same level as the accommodation businesses in swan river will that pose a problem or concern for you guys if i could just mention on that point how do you guys feel when you go to the rm and they don't contribute their fair share well said. Anything further? Does anybody else want to make representation or a presentation for anything? 
<clears throat> My comment to uh, Council of Edward would be, it, it won't uh, bode well with the accommodation people to think that they're singularly being chosen to fund RISE. This is a promotion for the community. It's not one single industry. And, and how that gets structured or how the, um, the, the RISE is told what their, what their description of promotion is has to be more than singular. It has to be for the whole broad spectrum of industry that we have in our community, which, by the way, is quite diverse when you compare us to other communities. But we just have to take advantage of that and promote that what we have. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Okay, being said that, uh, upon all the all, upon the hearing, all persons present, I now will be adjourning this hearing. We do have um, just letters from all the hotels as well. Yeah, absolutely. Let's give that to uh, Mr. Baldwin. You guys have a good night. Okay, good night. Thank you very much. Just the three? Yeah, two more there. This one? Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The result of the public hearing be adjourned and the regular meeting be reopened. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Carried. Did I miss something there? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I see his hand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Result of the letter from the Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations dated March the 20th, 2024, regor regarding appro uh, approval of municipal economic development infrastructure <laughs> program funding be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, Mr. Harvey, uh, since this, it's directed to this uh, funding to the Centennial Drive paving project, um, would this, is this new money or is this uh, part of a uh, portion of what we used to get in the basket funding from the previous government? Uh, this is separate from that. So this is this new. Was a, a grant that I applied for in November, I think it was. Okay, so uh, that said, so this, this funds would be accounted for in the, the budget, like updating it? So, yeah, yeah, it has expected grants. I had seventy five thousand, but it's eighty thousand, so just update that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you for doing that and uh, mm -hmm. good work. Six point two resolved that the memo dated March the twenty seventh, two thousand twenty four, from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities General Insurance Program regarding. Renewal be received. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3 Result of the letter from the Minister of Environment and Climate Change dated March the 21st, 2024, regarding waste reduction and recycling program be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yeah, I'd just like to comment that it's wonderful that we've received $8,945.22 for six months worth of collection. However, we are spending on average $46,000 to $50,000 a month, which is roughly $275,000 to $300,000 for the uh, six month period. and. The 8945 is really pennies on the dollar. So where are we at with the RFQ for sourcing and new recycling? Uh, that's, that's just gone out. So the next council meeting should have uh, results. Put in order, you. your worship. Okay. Yeah, stick to the, uh, the uh, resolution. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? carried. 6.4. Resulted letter from the Minister of Municipal and Northern Relations dated March 25th, 2024 regarding Mobility Disadvantaged Transportation Program 2023 final. 
operating grant be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7, 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio and then Councillor Medwood. Uh, Mr. Harvey, our last council meeting, I had asked you uh, when we could expect a letter sent out to the residents for the uh, local improvement uh, for the areas that we are doing that. And to date, that letter has not been received. I was sent out on Friday. Sent out on Friday. Oh, good Friday? Yeah, I was busy, so I came in and got those out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, do we have an update yet for the cost for the upgrading of the utility software to be able to email invoicing? No, I've, had, I've, been, I've been working on budget and some of the other items, so I haven't had a chance to delve into that. I have an email from them regarding it, but I haven't had a chance to look into it. Okay, thank you. We may have to wait for Mr. Poole to come home for that too, I think. So go ahead, Councilor White. Uh, any feedback relative to the, uh, the trees we have coming for Arbor Day or may not have? Uh, last I heard from uh, Watershed District, they would be here for May 20th. Oh, perfect. Great, thank you. Further discussion? Expected to be. All in favor? It's carried. Other reports? Council reports? Uh, Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll just speak a little bit about Watershed. Uh, just in conversation with, water, with Watershed, uh, the committee part of it. Uh, if one like Watershed, we do water testing on probably uh, low two, a second here. Uh, well, it's from like 90 to 100 tests a year on the water. So it is interesting to note that there is a test station at the museum. There also is a test station at the Jersak Crossing. So the one at the Jersak Crossing doesn't have a flow meter, which is a, a federal thing that we can't put in. But at the same time, in the conversation over the years, that it has been noted by people that have worked in that area that when the town discharges the lagoon that it actually lowers the phosphorus rate in the river because we're kind of flushing it. So with that in the conversation with the watershed we'll be monitoring more closely with that so if we can just get the data from the flushing goes which we can get at any one time we can actually keep track of what the water quality is going on there. So if there's summer students if that's what they do all summer part of their job is to do these water tests um, just to speak on that, trees, we uh, ordered 7,500 trees at the watershed this year. To date, we've planted somewhere between 55,000 and 60,000 trees since the start of that. So, also I did a tour at the landfill with the contractor out there. I went out to the load out there and he took me on a tour. He had some interesting ideas, so I'll be speaking with Mr. Harvey about that and some of the other things. So with that, I brought forward it before with Green Arrow about the measurement. I, I don't know if Mr. Harvey has an okay from council to go ahead with that company. Do I give him the contact information for there? So again, to speak on that, you will be able to tell what tons go across the scale and what volume you will create. So every year you would know, if you did this measurement, you would know how many years you had in the, uh, life of the cells. So with that, in talking with the contractor, and I don't know if he's, his calculations are bang on or whatever, but he does feel that we have five years left in the cell that we have there. If the cell is engineered on the north end of that thing, there's probably somewhere between 40 and 45 years there. So that was his rough estimate. So just something for council to keep uh, in mind. So, and that's about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council Medwood. Uh, well, I had uh, obviously attended the Committee of the Whole meeting on the 26th. Uh, sur uh, the Support Services of Seniors meeting as well as a TONS meeting in regards to the 
uh, Handy Transit and Transportation Solutions. I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Samantha Rodek, I want to say her last name is, to specifically uh, discuss and work towards the diversification of the board for the Handy Van and shift it more towards the community. And um, looking at starting to develop a framework for moving forward with that and the shuttle services and expanded services we'd like to offer. Uh, community safety and well-being community of practice meeting uh, was attended and uh, I have reached out and secured the housing or sorry friendship center for the seniors housing presentation. I'll be working with Connie probably tomorrow to uh, get some informal invites sent out and we will be using the business consortium network chain to get those circulated out and then for those that we, for the people or businesses that we don't feel might be on there, we're going to reach out to personally. Uh, uh, what else did I have? Oh, the reconciliation presentation on the 25th. I found very, very informative, uh, really resonated with me, his speaking to coming to the table with an open, clear, receptive mind, to leave any pre-perceived or inherited beliefs, judgments, opinions, and thoughts at the door and actually be open to listening and receiving information and moving from there. I found that very, uh, very insightful. There's a few other uh, aspects of this uh, presentation that I found equally insightful, but uh, I'll maybe allow for others to share their contributions and not take all the limelight on that one. Hmm. And uh, I think that is about it for my week. On the Handy Transit, uh, in that meeting you had Mr. Poole uh, present for that meeting as well? Which one? The one that you're referring to. No, it was just a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Samantha and I. A follow-up from the uh, uh, group meeting that was held on the Tuesday before that. But if we're talking about transforming anything, I thought Mr. Poole was supposed to be part of those, part of that, those meetings. Yep, I already have um, my structured what I can do, and then I'm going to come back to him because he has already indicated that administration does not have the time. So he has given me a little outline on what I can work on right now, and once I accomplish that, I will take it back to him and uh, check in. Okay. Thank you. Councilor White. Uh, I had the, the pleasure on the 25th of March to attend the International Day for Elimination of Racism, Racial Discrimination, and I want to thank uh, Councillor Powell and her team for coordinating that. Uh, it uh, was a special event with all the community represented and a very worthwhile cause. Uh, the Reconciliation Seminar, it's, it's nice to hear another person's perspective, and uh, get an interesting perspective. I'm sure there are multiple, multiple Opinions, but I appreciated it. I liked it. I thought he was very candid and very frank at the school division. I thank the school division for coordinating that. And on the 26th, we had our committee of the whole, and a lot of that time was spent with budget. And uh, Mr. Ganita and uh, Mr. Poole and, and team did exemplary work with the time. We haven't confirmed any numbers yet, but it looks like they've done a decent job of trying to pull the possible increases down. Uh, that's still up in the air, but they're, they're working very hard on it. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. I, uh, well, attended the uh, G8 event on Monday, March 25th, uh, where Cad Mustelman was speaking regarding the reconciliation. It was a very informative and interesting talk. Uh, very much appreciated the Swan Valley School Division for taking the time to set that up and having all the Valley Councils to attend. Um, and Looking forward to the upcoming AMM, April 10th and 11th. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Okay, hey, well, pretty much everything's been said here already, but um, we, uh, for the library, we had, um, we're working on a date. It's really been hard to uh, set a date for everybody to join. Um, 
because there's so many people that are on so many different committees. Um, I was able to stop, uh, chat with Paramount and Health employees just about the about the CT scanner a little bit and just get. I just wanted to, you saw a little bit on Facebook, but I went kind of stop in there and just check and see. So was able to and lots of good things from there. Um, to or took part in the homeless task force meeting, which happens every week on Thursdays, um, which has many of the different organizations meeting together. Um, just to talk about what's happening, um, kind of with, with CMHA and their um, the Timberland project there, which has been a, a quite a good, quite a big success. Lots of people have noticed, um, there's been lots of notice, notice that um, things have been um, a little bit quieter maybe around town. Um, the RCMP are part of this and there's quite, quite a few other organizations that have kind of taken notice. Um, it was supposed to end, that project was supposed to end as of April 1st. Um, as far as I know, I don't have confirmation. I, I wasn't able to speak to James today, but I, I believe this they got the funding to do this for another two months. So um, that's not confirmed, but I think that's in the plan. So, so yeah, uh, for that, that's yeah, that's what happened. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Moria. Um, not a whole lot, but uh, on March 20th, I attended uh, some PMH board meeting. Um, uh, one of the biggest things there that came out of that meeting was uh, um, the retirement um, of Brian Schoenbart. He's on his final days. This week is his last week. Um, and then um, uh, Trina Slat, or Slate is going to be taking her his spot. So uh, the board's excited um, to work with her. Um, she is part of the executive management team already. So um, it should be hopefully a smooth transition. Um, but as part of our discussions at the board level, um, because it was ironic that the, the CT scanner arrived just days before and the chatter that amongst the board members that they'd be getting feedback um, where we all noticed how people in Swan Valley were excited. Uh, but there is big excitement for communities all along the border of Saskatchewan up to Russell um, that are looking to come this way instead of going to Brandon knowing that they could probably get their scanner uh, faster by coming here or requesting to come here than actually going, waiting for Brandon. Um, so that, that was interesting to uh, uh, see. So hopefully that will reverberate more into other services coming, uh, bringing people to the community. So, but uh, it was definitely interesting to see that already. Two days after just a Facebook post and people are already, when is it going to be operational and I want to switch my appointment from Boundary Trails or Brandon to come this way, to knowing that it might get in sooner. So that's good to hear. Uh, and then uh, last week on March 26, our special uh, meeting and community of the whole meeting where we talked about budget primarily. And that's okay. all I have. I <clears throat> uh, don't have much more to add than what we already, everyone has talked about, but definitely Chief uh, uh, DeLorme, his presentation last Monday was good. and. I had a lot of uh, conversation with him afterwards, and uh, and he's invited me to come and spend some time in, in Regina in his office and spend some time there. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, <clears throat> had some chats on the side with Chief Janai with some of their uh, proposals and what they're going to be doing in, in town here, and and again trying to uh, um, nail down a date when we're all going to go up to visit him uh, and his council. In their community and that still has not been ironed out but uh, he, he promises me that that time will come soon so we just have to be patient I guess and uh, I had uh, some uh, side chats with the uh, with the premier here in the last week and uh, we talked about some some items and uh, budget and all that with uh, today's budget as well as chats where I'm gonna have a chance to sit down and meet with him so I'm looking forward to that in the and then the next little bit. Anything from the CAO's office at all? Well, Probably not. Sorry to premier anything. <clears throat> you didn't have to, I'm just asking if there oh, was. Nothing comes to mind that's uh, <clears throat> forefront of my mind. Okay, fair enough. All right, moving on. 8, 8 8.1. Whereas Allegiant Park washroom facilities there has been increases in vandalism, the presence of biohazards and other challenges in keeping the washroom facilities to acceptable standards of cleanliness. 
And whereas the Legion Park washroom facilities at current operational service level poses a health and security risk to staff and the public, therefore be it resolved that the Legion Park washroom facilities may remain closed to the public and available as part as the of the Legion Park concession rental uh, ball diamonds games renters and baseball coaches. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Boychuk. I guess, <clears throat> are we prepared for a little backlash for the walkers and people that utilize it during the summer months? That's, that's my only thing that I can see it. I mean, I definitely agree it's, it's, it's problematic. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's some way we could troubleshoot to do something to have some availability there for people that utilize that park for it. So there's a lot of elderly people and people <coughs> and kids there, and it's, it's a ways away from houses, I would think, but just that. Go ahead. Definitely something we've thought about. I don't have a solution for that other than just to wait and see what those comments end up being. I still think there's, I still think it's a good move for now until some things shift in the community. Um, and it will be available, you know, when there's events and stuff going on down there. So, yeah, I've been thinking lots about that, and I hope if people do have concerns or suggestions, they come forward and let us know because we're, we want to hear them and work with that. So, okay. I guess in that communication, if this passes, that maybe we can put that out there and say, you know, this is what we're doing because of this, and, and maybe if there's some recommendation or something, some feedback from the community, you know, would be helpful. Yeah, um, after this, you know, after council decided what they wanted to do here, I, I have some thoughts on how to get that word out there. Uh, mass registration is also this week on Thursday, which is a lot of uh, ball-focused groups that this will this will affect, and we just want to make sure everybody has the information and they're not caught by surprise down there, um, and then maybe not able to access it. But yeah. Okay. Uh, to put my memorial. Um, so two things. Uh, in the winter, those those washrooms are closed already. Correct. That's correct. We have right. to shut the water off. Right. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of walkers that are used to having no washroom facilities there in the winter. That's correct. So, yeah. So there's that. That's fair. Um, the second point, uh, from what I see, this is not an end all, be all. Like once we have the discussion, if we can figure out a way where we can uh, cost effectively manage this issue, where we can get that under control, where it's not costing us <coughs> tons of money to keep these washrooms open with the damage and the loitering and the paraphernalia that's that's going there, this can be rescinded and revisited at any time, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolve that the amended 2024 fee schedule with the removal of the animal control schedule and the addition of the fine schedule be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I'm noticing under noise control where I had suggested that where it says second offense $200, we changed the wording to match that of the other ones where subse subsequent violations would be $200 because this implies that there will only ever be two fines issued. So if people are still violating it for a third, fourth, tenth, or twentieth time, this would actually imply that we can only fine them twice. Uh, comments on that? Cause, uh, Unless, of course, that's the intent, is to only ever issue two fines to the same individual or household. So say subsequent fine? You're out of yeah. order, Councilor White. Um, just um, on that question, um, I don't recall if I maybe I wasn't here on that discussion if Council had agreed with making that change to appear to look that way. Councilor uh, White. Yes, yeah, disagree. I think subsequent fines, they could be $200 forever. 
doesn't necessarily for each repeated fine, yes. It doesn't have to be only one repeat fine. Well, currently so it only asking. has so the first offense and second offense. Well, it just it didn't say subsequent fines. It does not, and okay, that's, that's what, what I recommend. Okay, let's keep order here. Uh, Deputy Mayor Noyal. Um, yeah, you were here at that meeting when we talked about it, but that change was supposed to be reflected in it. That was not, the, the wording was supposed to be corrected that all the other ones were subsequent fines so that you could be a third, fourth, and fifth. You know, that we had made that suggestion. So good catch. Thank you. So administration then, um, where are we with this then? We, we would make that uh, change to that, to this. Yeah, is there anything else, or is everyone happy? Is it just that? Because we can just make that change. Doesn't appear to be, or is there? Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. No, I'm I'm good. That's I, I gave it a cruise, and that's seemed to catch everything except for that one. So. Okay. So. Councilor Bobbitt. So this is just the amendments that we're speaking on right now. The fee schedule, yeah. Yeah. We're not talking about a whole fee schedule. No, yeah. no, just this. Okay. okay, so then we can make that. Yeah, we can make that. Okay, uh, so then that will be on that subsequent. Okay, any further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, which which one was it again? It's noise control. It's the noise. noise control? Yeah, the noise control one. So it's right Thank to you. the bottom. You're welcome. And you could probably just cut and paste the, uh, well, maybe not totally, but the uh, very last line at the very bottom one there says subsequent violation and then the dollar value. You could probably just use that same wording. Mm -hmm. in yeah, front of the 200. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> All right, 8.3. Whereas the municipalities recognize the importance of eliminating solid waste from entering our solid waste landfill sites, and whereas it is estimated that in Manitoba 40% of waste is organic waste, and whereas in 2012 it was estimated that the national average of organic waste diversion was seven, 72 kilograms per person, but the amount of average of organic waste diversion was only 20 kilograms per person per year. And whereas the province of Manitoba recognized that the importance of organic waste diversion and set a goal increasing the diversion rate to 100,000 tons or approximately 82 kilograms per person per year, and whereas in 2023, the town of Swanover strategic plan recognizes the need to provide sustainable and reliable services with a focus on waste reduction actions and incentives. And whereas the town of Swanover recognizes the importance of implementing more environmentally friendly and economically sustainable solutions for solid waste reduction and diversion using cost effective options and technologies, and whereas the Town of Swanover Strategic Plan recognizes success indicators being measured by providing compost containers to residents and by advocating for promoting and leading by example on environmentally friendly products and procedures to reduce solid waste from entering, entering our solid waste landfill sites and our carbon footprint. Therefore, be resolved, the Town of Swanover participate in the food cycle, food cycle science corporations, food cycler, municipal food waste diversion pilot program, committing to the recommended 100 households, and further be resolved that the town of whatever commit $12,000 plus applicable taxes to the environmental health services operating fund for the 2024 budget to participate in the food cycler. Municipal Food Waste Diversion Pilot Program. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor Midwood. Yes, as the resolution states, this ticks off six items on our strategic plan. The objective to provide sustainable and reliable services, which also happen to rank number one on the priority 
uh, survey to all of council and administration, the strategic actions for reduce and reuse actions and incentives to pursue cost-effective options, solutions, and technologies, the two desired outcomes of more environmentally friendly and economically sustainable uh, and cost efficiency within the organization, as well as the two performance indicators of providing compost containers to residents, and for us as council to advocate for, promote, and lead by example on environmentally friendly products and procedures to reduce waste and carbon footprint. And we would be knocking off six accomplishments, all with one little tiny machine the size of a bread maker, not to mention I have at least 40 plus people who are on board and eagerly awaiting for this to go through so they can sign up for their food cycler. And the school division is interested in seven to 10 units. That would be one unit in every single school plus multiple ones for the high school, which would not only help with word of mouth to expand the program in 2025, but it is a great way to continue to build and develop on our relationship with the Swan Valley School Division, and I would like a recorded vote when we get we to that point. I haven't called the question yet, so you'll have to hold it off. Uh, Councillor Mollett. Uh, just wondering, does the Town of Swan River have a provincial sales tax number in uh, order to sell these things? CFO, CFO Ganita, we must have a provincial yeah. sales tax. Yes. They do? Um, so, who would handle the warranty if one breaks down? Go ahead. It would need to be verified, but I presume the manufacturer and the company that makes it. Okay. Go ahead. But that but would still have to come through. Uh, what I'm getting at is if you sell something, that's where the people go. You don't make sofas, but when the sofa breaks down, they come to you, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's we have to take that into consideration for administration. Uh, just. Also, so my under the impression it's going to be twelve thousand dollars. So roughly speaking, there's four thousand people in the town of Fawn River, so it's going to be three dollars per person for everybody in town to get a hundred people a benefit of a hundred dollars. So basically, what it boils down to. If you've done your math on that, I don't know. As close as I can. Okay, and just my one final question. If this resolution is defeated, when can it come back to the table? Uh, There's a time frame, right? I think a year's time or something like that. Yeah. I'm, I can't turn them off the top of my head right now, but. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Councilor Megwood. Um, in regards to the uh, $12,000, the original proposal from uh, food cycle science was for 11,800 with an estimate on shipping. However, inflation has gone up with carbon taxes since then, so I took the liberty of adding $200 to hopefully offset that. Um, and then it said plus applicable taxes. I believe the taxes is primarily going to be just your GST because they are actually based in Ontario. So I don't believe there would be a provincial tax, but that would be something to follow up on. And it is, in order to participate in the pilot project, it does require the municipal government to contribute $100 per machine. The end user household can per decide which size. There's two sizes available. However, being part of the pilot project, the smaller two and a half liter machine retails at $500. The subsidies coming from the company, a federal grant, which will not be accessible for much longer, and the municipal uh, contribution brings that price down to the homeowner to $150. For the five liter unit that is retailing at approximately $800, the subsidized uh, funding brings that price down to $300 for the house, ho homeowner. And in my personal opinion, we as individuals are responsible for the waste we generate. So I feel it's absolutely fair to share the cost and with the municipality because the municipality is responsible for managing that waste. So we both, as an individual generating waste and a municipal government who's responsible for waste management, kind of need to take a role in changing the way we handle our waste. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morion. Um, 
going back, I looked re or reviewed the material that was given to us in the presentation and then the subsequent uh, material that uh, Councillor Medwood had provided with us. Um, and then again, I guess, basically, it's devils in the details. Um, the resolution proposes $12,000 plus taxes. Uh, but what not is said is that based on the proposal, 50 of the smaller units and 50 of the bigger units, uh, the town of Swan River would have to purchase those 100 units and then resell them to the public, where Councilor Medwood indicates that she has 40, so that uh, potentially customers, so that leaves us roughly 60 that still are unaccounted for, so that the town would still be holding the tab on that um, and administrating those sales, and if there's any warranties, would work with the company to get those resolved uh, with that. So. So there's a lot more work to it than just subsidizing $100 per unit um, for 100 units plus shipping um, with that. So uh, there will be a lot more work uh, and administration for the front office staff uh, for us to store these 100 units um, and then deal with those um, individuals back and forth throughout the, the program. Um, as Council Medwood says, the individuals are responsible for their waste. Um, why should the people who don't participate in that be responsible for subsidizing uh, a food cycler for someone who wants to? If a person wants to look after their waste, uh, they should be responsible for 100% of the cost uh, for it. So, uh, so, so that's, that's my view is that why should the entire town be responsible for subsidizing 100 food cyclers that we don't have 100 signed up uh, purchasers yet? Uh, Council Medwood, you have two, uh, two times to speak on resolution. I'll let you go one more time. Okay, well, uh, with regards to municipal government, as leaders, we should be thinking seven generations ahead. Our current waste management strategies are not even going to make it seven generations. As a fifth generation Shaw, with my great-great-grandfather being one of the very first homesteaders here in 1898, we're not getting close. We're running out of space in our existing landfill. There's already talks around the valley of potentially working towards a regional landfill. As the generations have moved forward, we have become more wasteful, progressively so with each generation. And if we do not change our approach to the way we handle waste management, we are not going to survive this seven generations, we won't make it another seven generations, and we need to think about more reduction strategies. The uh, resident will have the option as to which uh, size of machine they purchase. This was just an example, splitting it 50-50. If all 100 people want the smaller unit, it will cost the town less up front. But with some advertising, I have no doubt that the 100 will sell out in 90% of, and it's a stat that was provided in the information I gave you, 90% or better of the communities that do provide sell out of their units. And in the case of the men, I think it was either St. Andrews or East St. Paul, they sold out in less than a day, contacted the company and doubled their order. So it's up to the residential homeowner as to which one they wish to. And as for costs and a burden, this is an upfront cost, yes, but it is a one-time upfront cost. Our current waste management is an annual budgetary line that continues to grow. So is our recycling. It is an annual almost half a million dollars each year and it continues to grow. This is, offers a solution for waste reduction, a one-time upfront expense without an annual continued increase and in burden on the taxpayers. Council White. I'm all for recycling. I think recycling is wonderful. I agree with the Deputy Mayor. That's the cost, but and I read the, I made a point of reading that it says the, the company will buy back any new and unused ones that we package and we ship back. So you're right, you've got time to do that, hopefully. We ship back and we pay for the ship back. There has to be a survey of all the users, how it's going, how it's not going, whatever that survey means, by admin. That takes time. 
we assist with return. So there's a bunch of time issues here that are reflected in the, uh, it's 11,800, but 12,000 is fine. So I, I, I think our team has enough to do on their table already, and I think the guys who want to buy one should buy one. If I want one, that's my job. Okay, for the discussion, Officer Powell. No, I, I do support um, support it. I think that um, definitely uh, it's something we do have to consider or have to definitely look forward uh, down the road to. Um, maybe we maybe we have to look at finding those hundred people right off the bat. Maybe that's something we should should do um, beforehand. I know we have about forty, but I know if we were to promote, promote this, we have a, a there's a, there's enough people out there. I would fully say would support it. So I'm just uh, okay. And they further? Okay. Then I shall ask the question. Councillor, this is where I would I, like a recorded vote so it reflects our individual. All you have to say is recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. <coughs> Moving on to 10. Sorry? Sorry? Oh, uh, just um, for attracting the vote. Oh, here. right. Good point. Uh, Councillor. Medwood and Councillor Powell were in favor. Hey, got it. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. 10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows to hereby approve for payment. General accounts checks number 31401 to number 31427, totaling 82,145 and 34 cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5430 to number 5434 totaling $114,478.39 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $785 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $14,462.35 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? 10.2. Whereas sections 365.2 of the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property tax properties, the taxes in respect uh, of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. And whereas Section 372 of the Municipal Act provides the municipality may set any terms or conditions for the sale of the property or a property uh, to be sold for taxes and may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and cost in respect of the property. Be it resolved that the Town of Swan River place a reserve bid on each property included in the 2024 tax sale in the amount of tax arrears and the cost owing in respect of the property. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. So that more or less means that we can only bid what is owing. Is that what I'm reading here? Say that again? We can only bid what's owing if it goes up for tax sale. We're, we're, put, we're putting That's in correct. a reserve. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe I didn't mis misunderstood the question. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So if someone bids less than what's owing, yeah. they don't automatically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw number 1, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a structure standard, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Resolve the bylaw number 2, 2024, being a bylaw of the Town of Swanover to provide for an administrative penalty scheme for parking and general bylaw enforcement will be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Bobbick. Seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Okay, it's a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 
11.3. Resolve the bylaw number 2, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to amend bylaw 13, 2019, waste collection, disposal, and recycling systems, bylaw number 13, 2016, prohibit graffiti, bylaw number 21, 2022, animal control, bylaw number 10, 2012, noise bylaw, bylaw number 20, 2022, business license, and bylaw number 1, 2016, rental safety standards to designate that bylaw, uh, but sorry, designate that bylaw contraventions and then be dealt with uh, by a penalty notice and where applicable to add that fines may be added to taxes be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Midwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And number 13, resolve that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, this is an item that Council Medwood has brought forward on personnel. Moved by Council Medwood, seconded by Council Bobbick. All in favor? We're in camera. 